You are listening to the For Flourishing Sake podcast by Frederica Roberts. Welcome to episode 10. Today I bring you a fantastic guest, somebody I'm not only honoured to call a friend, I met her face to face at last at the Practical Pedagogies Conference where we were both speaking um, in Cologne last year, although we'd known each other on Twitter for a little while longer, but somebody who I really wish I'd had in my life when I was a teacher many, many years ago. I left teaching because of stress and the biggest stressor for me was the fact that I didn't have a toolkit to deal with challenging behaviour. Nobody had taught me. And when I talked to other teachers about it, which there seemed to be a lot of taboo around, um, but when I did occasionally, all I kept hearing was, oh, the first five years are hell, and after that it gets a little bit more bearable. And that wasn't ultimately particularly helpful. So this lady is extremely knowledgeable in the area of dealing with extremely challenging behaviour. So I will hand it over to her as she tells us some practical tools and strategies to deal with what to do when, for example, students tell you to F off. Hello, Adele Bates Behaviour and Education Specialist here. And as my title suggests, I do often get told to F off by my pupils. In fact, that's probably one of the um, tamer sentences that I get. And my tip is around how do we not take this personally? Because for staff and for pupils to, to try and protect ourselves around that is a really important mental health strategy. Because if we go home and take everything to heart, it can be very, very difficult to do our job. There are two main areas around this. There's what you can do in the moment when it's happening and what you can do around it in preparation and prevention. So in preparation, first of all, know your triggers. A colleague recently of mine um, has started going grey and he said to me, I know that that's the case. I know it's natural. I'm just still not quite over it myself. And if the pupils pick up on it, it's, you know, it's really going to get at me. So he's already recognised a trigger for him. You know what yours are. Um, so know what they are so that you can avoid them. And so that if a pupil comes to it, you know that you might be more sensitive on that issue than any others. And of course, if the pupil smell that you're a bit more sensitive, they're going to pick at it all the more. More of a reason for you to avoid it and close down any conversations around that. Secondly, meditate. I meditate for about 15 to 20 minutes each morning and I've got it into a habit now that it's like cleaning my teeth. If I forget to do it, I feel a bit dirty. Um, But I do recognise that I take things more personally. The meditation practice enables me to put space between what people are saying and how I react to it. There are many, many avenues into meditation. I'm not going to suggest all of them here, but I'm just going to advocate and cheerlead for, for that actually works. And finally, talk to other people. If if taking something personally is happening quite a lot for you and it is affecting you, find the mentors, find the colleagues. We, we all experience this. You're not alone. Keep talking to others. Then in the moment, use a really simple script that says that says it's not the time. So, for example, Miss, is it true that you've did a little? OK, Joe, thanks for that question, but it's not the time to do that. How are you doing on question three? refocus it back to the learning always focus it back to the learning because that's actually what you're there for and finally don't feel afraid to pass it on to a colleague i have on occasion said i can't discuss that it really upsets me we're going to discuss it at break time we're going to invite miss so and so and we'll discuss it and have that conversation facilitated that's absolutely fine too so hopefully That gives you just some starter ideas of how to protect yourself a little bit and therefore to be able to be better um, able to support the pupils whilst you're not having to deal with things emotionally. If you want to know about other ideas on how to work with pupils with distressing behaviour, then have a look at my website on adelbateseducation.co.uk where you can find some free videos on how to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frederica, and thank you, Flourishing Education. Thank you for tuning in to the For Flourishing Sake podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'd be really grateful if you'd spread the word. If you'd like to get in touch with questions or comments, or to contribute to a future episode, 
please go to forflourishingsake.com where you'll find all my contact details. And there you'll also be able to leave individual comments on specific episodes. I look forward to hearing from you.